Hello, my name is Rick Lewis. I'm with Phenon Hoop Report. In today's Coach's Corner segment, I have Grayson Pierce of King Mountain High School. Welcome, Coach. Glad to be here, Rick. Thank you for having me. Coach, you were born and raised in Cleveland County, and you graduated from Crest High School in 2003. What was it like growing up in a small rural area? Slow-paced. Um, we, we had a really good life, uh, slow-paced life. We, we played outside all the time. We didn't worry about much. Uh, rode our bikes all the time. Played pickup ball in the neighborhoods. Um, it was a town where, you know, an area where mom would tell you to get out of the house at 8 o'clock in the morning and don't come back till 8 o'clock at night. Um, and we didn't worry about too much because we knew everybody. Um, but it was, it, we, we had a slow-paced life. We had a good life. Coach, um, you played one year at Lee's McRae on a um, basketball scholarship, and you hurt yourself, and then you decided to transfer to Appalachian State. Talk about that process. You know, it was, it was always a dream of mine to play college basketball, um, and I didn't care what level. I was never the most – talented player uh, I wasn't a tremendous athlete um, I was a shooter um, and I played hard um, you know, that, that was the things that really were instilled at me at a young age is if you whatever you do give it your all and, and play as hard as you can um, you know so I, I was able to luckily and fortunately able to to get a little bit of money to play some college basketball at Lee's McCray um, you know, I was naive enough to believe that I would be the best player on the team when I walked in as a as a freshman. And 15 minutes into my first practice, I knew that wasn't going to happen when I got dunked on by Sean Zellers, uh, a rising senior. And, uh, you know, I, I slowly learned that I'm going to have to work my way into a rotation here. Um, and unfortunately, that, that did not happen uh, because halfway through the season, um, I, I tore two ligaments in my foot and had to have surgery that ended my season there. Um, so I transferred out to App State. Uh, my dad was a Marine, so I had the VA scholarship um, that I could use at Appalachian State and be on a full scholarship there and not have to worry about putting my family in a financial uh, burden because at Lee's McCray, you know, it was a private school, very expensive, and I was only getting a little bit of basketball money. Um, so. I tried to do what, uh, what I thought was best for my family, and um, I transferred out to Appalachian State. Um, and then as I transferred out to App State, I was taking some summer classes there um, and was playing a couple pickup games in the summer and did not know who I was playing pickup with until after we got finished playing later that day. And a couple of them said, you need to come become a walk-on. We, our, our coaches, will, we're going to have walk-on tryouts that they've – They've seen you play a couple times in here. They want you to come walk on. Um, and I didn't know I was playing with Dante Mentor, who transferred from Virginia, DJ Thompson, who's one of the best point guards that's ever came through there. Uh, and me being a prideful, naive 19-year-old, I wasn't about to be a walk-on. I was just on a, a college-level scholarship player, and I wasn't going to be a, a walk-on. Um, Looking back now, I wish I could go back and do that. But a guy that doesn't regret much because I believe the Lord works in mysterious ways um, and has everything happen for a reason, you know, I look back now and say I, I see why that happened because after that I joined a fraternity, um, met some guys in my fraternity that, uh, you know, played high school basketball, were really good high school players. I mean, we got together and we started coaching some, some youth leagues in the area, some youth teams. Um, it really taught me a lot about myself and, and taught me that I love the game of basketball and love to teach the game of basketball. Uh, you know, so I, you know, it was a transition, um, but I'm fortunate now that it happened the way it did because um, it's taught me a lot about who I am and what kind of coach I am. Well, I graduated in um, Appalachian State in 1975, and I mentioned, you know, that um, – you know, Bobby Cremins was the coach at Appalachian State. You had um, Kevin Cantwell, Gene Littles, and they had the Bronx to Boone Express. Um, that was some great times for me as, as a student. Um, my highlight at Appalachian State was I was playing and in, in, played intramural, and we won the, the um, campus intramural championship. But, um, you know, Appalachian State has some fond memories for me. But 
for you, Coach, after you graduated from Appalachian State, you had a unique, you know, situation come up where you had a chance to go back home. Mm -hmm. And you had a chance to go back and be a teacher and a coach at Crest High School. And you coached there for one year. Now, unfortunately, after that first year you were there, they eliminated your position. What was that like? You know, after you graduate college, and I think any coach or any guy that wants to be a coach, their dream job is the school they played at. Um, you know, so I was on cloud nine when I was able to come back to Crest and, and was named the assistant varsity coach um, for my first year. We were terrible. Um, we, we did – I don't think we won a game. Um, but it was so fun to just be back in the school that I would put so much sweat equity into and playing on the court, you know, coaching on the court that I, I can remember I could have looked out there and said, well, I saved a loose ball there. Or I got a key rebound there. And right up there is the conference championship I played on or there's the regional championship we played on. Um, you know, so it was – that was fun. Uh, and after that first season there, I was actually named the head JV coach before summer came. And going into summer, we had a group of history teachers from around Cleveland and Rutherford County that went on a federal grant trip to New Orleans. And I can remember it like it was yesterday. Um, we were sitting in the World War II Museum in New Orleans, and my principal, Roger Harris, came up to me and said, I need to talk to you. I said, okay. So he pulled me into the other room. And we're sitting in New Orleans now and told me, he said, Coach, your position is not going to be here next year. So you're not going to have a job um, teaching at Crest High School. Now, this was in 2009, right during the recession. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm just bamboozled. I'm going, what do you mean I'm not going to have the job? I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. And they said, well, we're having to eliminate some positions, so your position is eliminated. So I'm mad, uh, not at them, just mad in general. And I walk out, um, and I sit down. And when I sit down, one of my buddies that I grew up with, um, who was one of my best friends growing up, was a history teacher at Kings Mountain High School. And I said, well, I just lost my job. He said, what do you mean you lost your job? And I said, well, they told me my position was cut at Crest. He looks over at one of his buddies he teaches with at, at Kings Mountain, and says, call Ronnie Funderburg. Ronnie Funderburg was the principal at Kings Mountain High School. Um, and he called Ronnie. And by the end of the time I had – so within a 15-minute window, I had been fired and been given an interview at Kings Mountain High School uh, to come teach. So I, we, we get back on like a Thursday, and on Friday, I roll into Kings Mountain High School and talk to Ronnie Funderburg. Um, and in the room is the AD. And her name is Suzanne Grayson. Uh, Suzanne Grayson's nephew is still one of my best friends and was one of my best friends growing up. Um, and she coached volleyball at Crest when I was there. So we knew each other. She knew who I was. And she, off, you know, Ronnie Funderburg uh, was able to get me a job at Kings Mountain High School. And then I was offered the head JV coach position um, at 24 years old, which is unheard of you know, for anybody to be coaching at 23, 24 years old. Um, and I'm given the head JV coaching job. Um, you know, I said earlier, God is, you know, he, he has a plan for all of us. And now that we look back at it and I can see the pieces falling into place, you know, it's kind of amazing how he does. And, you know, you just have to be open to, to listen to him and, and accept what he's doing for you. And it's, it, it's a fun story. Um, you know, and I was just lucky enough to, to get the position and uh, go on from there. Well, I would also think being at Crest, you know, going back, that was the school that David Thompson went to. So I would think there would be some, you know, I'm coaching at the school that David Thompson um, played at. Yeah, my, you know, my mom graduated or was in school with David Thompson, and I've actually met him a few times. Um, he still comes to Crest games. And um, once I got the job there, um, I actually had a conversation with David, uh, was able to coach his nephew. Um, at Crest, Dion Malachi played at Crest. Um, you know, David's a big figure from Cleveland County, uh, right. especially in the, the Crest area. Um, 
And I grew up a fan of his because you just knew who he was. He used to host camps um, in the area, and I attended one when I was seven or eight years old. And I can still remember just thinking, that's what I want to be one day. I want to be like him. Uh, You know, a lot of people grow up thinking, I want to be Mike. Um, I wanted to be David Thompson, you know, because I wanted to be Skywalker. Everybody in Cleveland County, you know, knew David Thompson. If you ask anybody in Cleveland County, they're going to argue he's the GOAT. You know, not Michael Jordan. He's the GOAT. Now, we don't know. So I'll get hot and bothered here now because we don't know what he could have done because he never had a chance. And he has a tremendous story, uh, you know, the, the ups and downs he went through in his life. And, you know, a lot of the things I've talked to him with have, have really impacted my life. And he probably doesn't even know that he had a huge impact on my life, but he did. Um, so, yeah, David Thompson's a big figure in Cleveland County. Well, you stated when you went to Kings Mountain, you, it's sort of like divine intervention, and you went there as a JV coach. But in 2011, the head coach of the varsity team stepped down. Yep. And the AD at Kings Mountain gave you the job as head coach with the interim tag. That first year, you went 5-17 and 17 as the interim head coach. Did you ever think – after that first year going five and 17, that you would actually be named the head coach? Well, it must have been meant to be because the year before that, my second year as the JV coach, we didn't win a game. Um, so going 0 and 17 and then going 5 and 17 as the interim coach, I didn't think there was any shot in the world I was going to be named the head coach. Um, I, in my mind of minds, I thought the only reason I've been given this job is because the coach, Rick Franklin, who stepped down as the coach, stepped down late and they didn't have time to do interviews. Um, and we went into the off season after my first year going five and 17 and I did not know where I stood. So I kept conducting off season workouts. Um, we went and played 20 something games in the summer. Um, we, we still did everything we had done in the previous season. Um, and about April come rolling around and I still hadn't heard anything. And I walked up to the principal's office and I just said, Mr. Funderburg, I need to ask you a question. Am I going to be the coach next year or, or what? He said, Oh yeah. I just thought you assumed you were going to be the coach. That's kind of how the interim tag got removed from me was a conversation that, he never even planned on having because he forgot all about the interim tag. Um, so it was, you know, the, when Suzanne was, said, yeah, you're the official head coach, it was definitely gratifying because I'd always wanted to be a head coach. I did not ever expect to be a head coach at 26 years old. Right. Um, you know, most people get their first coaching job in their 30s, and I'm four years away from 30, and I'm coaching a varsity basketball team at Kings Mountain High School who has, you know, had pretty good success in the in their history of having a decent basketball team. Um, you know, so it was it was a big deal to me to take over that team and try to rebuild it uh, because right. we had not been very good. Um, and they had not had a very good success record um, the years before, you know, my tenure there um, or my taking over there. Um, they they weren't very good. And the years I was the JV coach, they, they didn't have a winning season um, on the varsity program. So it was a rebuilding thing, uh, but I did not expect to get that job at all. And I was, you know, I'm, I'm very happy and blessed that I did. But how gratifying was it must have been – that the AD has so much faith and confidence in you. Yeah, you know, I look back now and I and it, it really is heartwarming to realize that somebody put that much faith in a 26-year-old kid um, to try to turn a program around, um, who the community was putting a lot of pressure on the AD and principal to hire a basketball coach that would win. Um, and going five and 17 in your first year and her saying, no, we're going to take the interim tag off. We're going to make, name you head coach. Um, you know, it, 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 it changed my life. I mean, right. because now I look back on it and I've had a pretty good success here at Kings Mountain uh, the last six, seven years. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I could have named myself the head coach after going right. five to 17. 
Um, so it, yeah, she had, she had a lot of trust in me and faith in me that I could get the job done. Like I mentioned to you earlier, it's sort of like divine intervention, but you know, um, you were able to have that opportunity to be the head coach and you had that time to develop your culture. And you stated that you were during the summers, you were taking a team and playing 20 plus games during the summer to help build the culture there at Kings mountain. And then all of a sudden in 2014, it started to click and you're in 2014, the team went 19 and eight. They advanced to the third round of the playoffs. The next season in 2015, the team went 16 and 10. You advanced to the second round. And then in 2016, you went 21 and seven. You won the conference championship and you advanced to the third round of the playoffs. So now you're on a three year run that you're getting this team into the playoffs each and every year. And then in 2017, you had another great year. You went 19 and eight. Again, you advanced to the third round. And then in 2018, 24 and six, you won the conference championship and also the conference tournament championship. And again, you advanced to the third round of the state playoffs. In 2019, again, you know, this is in your, you know, fifth year. Now you're 21 and seven and you advanced to the third round again. So, you got it going on at Kings Mountain. You got it clicking. What was going through your mind at that point in time? You know, after the the first year, um, we, me and my assistant coach at the time, were at the coaches clinic, um, and we were sitting down for dinner at Ham's. And I just looked at him and I said, "We got to figure something out. We, I'm not going to go five and seventeen again. We, we can't do it." Um, it's not in my nature to just be satisfied with, with that. We literally, and I still have um, the napkin that we wrote everything down on in my office. Um, I cherish it. I have it. We literally mapped out what we wanted to do as, as coaches at Kings Mountain High School. He was with me for seven years. Um, this will be my 10th year going into, going into my 10th year as coach. So he's been with me for seven years. He's now our girls. Uh, head coach at Kings Mountain, um, and we, I mean, it, we sat there probably until they shut down, and we literally just drew out a map and a plan for what we wanted to do at Kings Mountain High School, um, so, you know, you look around that 2014, 15, 16 year, you're, you're going, it, it's working, you know, we're, we're having a lot of success, uh, where players are, are buying in to being basketball players because if you know anything about Cleveland County, um, it is a football county. Absolutely. You've got, you've got Crest High School, Shelby High School, Kings Mountain now, which has been, you know, a dominant football figure, Burns High, It is a football county. Um, and that was one of the biggest things that we had to, to try to break um, at Kings Mountain was you know, basketball is important too. And right. – uh, we're here to stay and we're not just going to be here today, gone tomorrow type thing. Um, and the thing we did, and I think the biggest thing that changed our culture at Kings mountain was we have a ton of two sport athletes, right? But if you're going to be a two sport athlete, you're going to be a two sport athlete. You're not going to be a football player that plays basketball in the winter. Um, so we, we set the, the tone and set the precedent early that if you're going to play at Kings Mountain High School, you're going to go with us this summer. You're going to be in the gym. Um, you're going to go to however many games we play, which we play about 23 games in the summer, 24 games in the summer, as many as we can get in. Uh, we try to go and play. Um, and, you know, that just did a ton for our culture, not just playing and being on the court, but being on the bus together and riding from, you know, here to there and the kids having to, talked to each other, sitting down after every tournament we left and eating a meal together, um, and the kids building that relationship with each other, you know, pay dividends on the court because now you see the team chemistry start to come together. Um, and, it, you know, that really did a ton for our team. Um, and it helps that we've had some players over the years too. You know, you have a Josh Helton who came to Kings Mountain in that 20. 14 season who's a 6'8 powerhouse who signed and played at uh, West Point. Um, and then you get an Adrian Delft to come in with him. Uh, that doesn't hurt either. Um, so we've, we've been lucky to have a lot of good players come through and 
we've had a lot of success with, you know, our culture and establishing our culture. And it's taken some time to do, but, you know, we, we're lucky that we got it established and we are where we are. Coach, who would you say has had the biggest impact on you as a basketball coach? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, probably right off the top of my head, I would say my high school coach, Billy Ellis. Um, you know, Billy was a guy that taught me a lot of lessons, and I, and I was lucky that when I got that job at Crest, he was still teaching there. Um, he wasn't coaching, he was teaching, but we we built a really good relationship, and I got to, you know, pick his brain about different things. Um, so he was a big one. Um, Aubrey Hollifield over at Shelby High School has been a huge mentor to me. Um, he's the one that I got the idea of playing all summer long. Um, we used to ride, we used to take the same bus to go play at the same tournaments. Um, and just being able to bounce ideas off of, you know, a two-time state championship coach now um, was huge for me. Guys like Greg Wright up at RS Central, um, you know, just being able to pick his mind about defense. Um, Gary Bound from that was at St. Stephen's, um, who's now with uh, the North Carolina Basketball Coaches Association. Uh, me and his son played against each other when we were at Crest, and he was at St. Stephen's. Uh, we have a great relationship. I actually called him after this season and said, Coach, uh, this has been a roller coaster season. What, what do you got for me? Um, and he took the time out of his day to, to talk to me for about two hours and, you know, just give me some encouragement and all that. Uh, but I tell you, one guy that really changed me after my first year was Sean Vessel at North Forsyth. Um, I was working a Bob Gibbons camp, and I met Sean and Andy Muse and all those Muse boys that were yeah. uh, doing those the the Bob Gibbons camps. And uh, I was picking Sean's brain just back and forth that day, and he said, "Why don't you just come to take a day off of work and?" come up to North Forsyth and I'll show you what we do. He said, me talking about it ain't going to do you any good. Come up and see what we do. And at that time, they had had a tremendous run um, of being really, really good. So I went to my, my principal and said, listen, I need to take a day off of work uh, to go up and, and I want to talk to this successful coach and try to, you know, just see what he does. And my coach or my principal said, that's fine. We'll pay for it. Go on up. Per, uh, professional development because you're a basketball coach. You're trying to get better. So I drove up to Winston-Salem and I got there at about 930 in the morning and I did not leave until about 930 at night. Wow. And just being able to see the way Coach Vessel interacted with his players in the hallway, um, how he interacted with them during off-season workouts. Um, the practice planning he did, uh, how detailed he was when it came to his workouts, um, how hard he was on them, but yet how he put his arm around them after he chewed the rear ends, uh, really taught me a lot about the kind of coach I wanted to be. One thing that sticks out even more than anything was in between classes up there, I would uh, probably 13 kids made sure they came by and spoke to their coach. And I asked him, I said, how did you build that? And he said, man, I have open door policy. My door never closes. So I took that back with me to Kings Mountain. And in my office, I don't even have a door on my office. Um, I don't close it. Um, it's, it it's literally the, the, the ultimate open door policy. If you need me, I'm here. Um, and that was one of the biggest things that changed for me when I saw that. Um, and he probably doesn't even know that that made that big of an impact on me. Um, but he's, he was one that really, it was an eye-opening experience for me to see that. Well, Coach, you've always said that God has a plan. And um, when I saw your resume and heard your story, you know, I mentioned to you, I said, um, this had, you had divine intervention. And if you really think about it, in the last seven years, you have built a powerhouse at Kings Mountain in the western part of the state on the 3A level. And like you said, most of your players are two two sports stars, they're playing football, they're playing basketball. But, you know, you sort of do some reflection. You go, you know what? You lost your job the first year at Crest. That was your dream job where you went to high school. You accidentally get hired at um, 
for an interview to go to Kings Mountain. You get there, the head coach steps aside, you're an interim coach. And all during this process, you know, you said you went 0-17 as a JV coach, and then you're now you're the interim head coach at the Kings Mountain, you know, boys program, and you go five and seventeen. But the AD had patience and had faith in you as a person, as a coach, because since that time, you have developed Kings Mountain into one of the top programs in the western part of the state. It's pretty, pretty impressive, Coach. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, and, I, and I'm a blessed man. I'm, I'm lucky. Um, I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. Um, we, I, I left four years ago. I bought a house that's literally across the street from the school. Um, you know, and I've got three kids that I, I can't imagine sending them anywhere else. Academically, we're one of the top schools in the state. Um, you know, and athletically, we're starting to get there. I would, I would put our facilities up with anybody from top, from 1A to 4A, um, football or basketball-wise, in the state. Um, we, we have a tremendous community here uh, that is willing to, to go out of their way to make sure we have what we need and what we want to be successful. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, give all the credit to God um, that I've, I've I am where I am today. Um, without Him, I, I don't know where I'd be. Um, so it is, it's it's amazing to look back at my story. And honestly, I probably haven't thought too much about it until we sat down and talked. And now I'm like, wow, it, all this stuff you, you can really see uh, God's hand in every bit of it. So you know, it's it's a fun story, and it's it's been a wild ride. And, you know, now I hope to get over that third round hump. Uh, that's, that's been a booger for us. But when you play Wendell Moore twice and he puts you out and then you go up to Greensboro and you have to play the, the not twin towers, but the quadruple towers that year with Bigelow and then the uh, Brown, the kid that went to Brown, the kid that went to Fayetteville State. Um, and then last year or two years ago going up to Catholic and getting beat by them, you know, Hopefully we can get past that third round and, you know, we still have an ultimate goal of winning a state championship at some point in time. Um, so hopefully we can get that done sooner than later. Well, like you said, you wouldn't even hired yourself back in those <laughs> days, but um, you know what, you've been very successful and, and you, you continuously make it to the third round each and every year. And um, we look forward to watching your team play this coming season. And we want to say thank you for coming on Coach's Corner and we want to wish you the best of luck moving forward. Well, thank you for having me, Rick, and thank you for what you do. Thank you.